congratulations, you guys. I mean, what a what a great, great film. And so both of you collaborated on the story, right? And tell me a little bit about where you came up with the idea. Um, how did you incorporate your own lives in, into the story? Uh, well, I had, I had had the sort of core idea for a while, that there is a young nun who was gotten in high school and her brother had come back from the war and this thing had happened to him um, and they had parents who were sort of uh, hippie stoners for all intents and purposes. And I started writing it, it wasn't really coming together, um, and then Melody uh, insisted that uh, I come see her parents' house on the side of a mountain of Asheville, North Carolina, uh, which is what I did. We spent about four days there and took a look at the house, and then you took me around to see um, houses of friends and family in the area, um, and those became all the locations for the movie. That's sort of where all, where all those places in, in North Carolina, in the film, were those places we saw that weekend. Um, and just in the course of that, uh, started talking about uh, our own experiences with our own parents and growing up and parent-child relationships. Um, and I always say that I, you know, I'm not terribly creative. Uh, and in the long run, um, you know, if you can inject as much truth into a movie as possible in any way, shape, or form, it helps because the, those things all have actual emotional reference points that you can fall back on, you know. You can say, like, well, this isn't exactly what happened, but it's based on this, and I felt this way about it, and this is how I dealt with it. So there, you can sort of fall back emotionally to process those things if they don't 100% make sense. Um, yeah, and it just ended up becoming a real sort of amalgamation between your stories and my stories over the course of the writing process. I, I find it also really interesting, and I don't know if it was intentional, but you could go ahead, go ahead and say, like, yes, it was, but... The whole like kind of psychological aspect of it too, because um, the girl who plays the nun needs a mother figure, and so I mean I, I guess that's why she went to to become a nun because she needs her mom. It, it looks like the roles are opposite; like they're the adults and, and the, the parents for the children. Um, how much of that was? Um, where did you get all that kind of material? Um. I mean, I guess just the same thing, just from sort of our conversations about things uh, and the way the story started shaping up. I think a lot of it, too, is that it's like, I think there's a lot of value um, in just simply choosing the unexpected answer or even just the opposite of how it would normally be done. Um, and I think a lot of that, there are a lot of decisions in the film, like uh, have you know, like, having liberal parents but sort of more conservative children, you know, that are that are literally just like, well, what's the usual paradigm uh, in most movies for how this is? And it's conservative parents and children. So simply by reversing that and uh, making yourself look at what that opposite situation would look like, you're looking at something in a new way and hopefully finding maybe not necessarily 100% new things to say, but maybe new ways to say things. Yeah, I mean, I have... I would not say by any means that I have ever been terribly conservative. Uh, uh, my parents are certainly liberal and creatives. My, my stepfather's a drummer, um, and they own an entertainment contracting business, which is very similar to the kind of business that my parents own in this family. And um, my mother is like a really spiritual, liberal person. And as a, But I remember having this conversation with them as a teenager where I was like really adamantly anti-drugs and um, and I went through a period where I was like very I don't want to say straight edge but I was like on the verge of that for sure and I remember having this like, very impassioned argument with them that like anything anybody any substance anybody uses any day is an every day is an addiction and like being really judgmental of them and their friends for basically smoking pot at the, or my perception of that at the time and um, you know and of course that's definitely not the way I feel now but you know, there are also times where, um, <laughs> no, not, not are at you all. secret conservative? <laughs> no, not at all. But, uh, but I mean, I'm certainly not. Um, but there, but there, I know what it feels like to sort of have very liberal parents, but to yet have the desire to rebel. 
you know, I'm openly gay. Um, and I, but it took me a very long time to come out to my parents, even though I knew very well they wouldn't have a problem with that. There was just like some desire in me to be, have some space between us, and I think that's a very normal thing. But if you have super conservative parents, it's really easy to do that, you know? Like, it's really easy to sort of have that, that dichotomy. And it's interesting to see characters like that. Additionally, like, I mean, I don't know. I think that the mother-child, uh, mother-daughter dynamic is a very specific one. Um, and those of us who are mothers or daughters really know, like, that that can be a very difficult, I think, especially in your teens and early 20s, that can be a really difficult thing. But all parents and children, this is thing we talked a lot about, at some point, as adults, you start to have to realize that your parents are just human beings. And the hope that we invest in parents as we get older or as we're young, young people, you know, and the sort of way that we feel about parents as sort of superheroes. And those things break down at different points. And sometimes that is, I think that's a part of what that sort of leaving the nest thing is. It, and in this film, it's a very specific thing that makes her leave the nest. But there are always these sort of disappointments and these things that we deal with as, as parents and children. And um, we were at places in our lives where we were seeing our parents as human beings and becoming friends with them. And I think looking back over that process is a really inspiring thing and something most everyone has had the pleasure of, or the heartbreak of going through that with a parent can understand. It's a pretty universal thing. Because of the contradictions, it could have also been easily been so artificial and kind of campy and very sure. like, kind of Hollywood bluff. But I just love the way that you guys made it. You made it very respectful to the to her as being a nun because that could have also have been like judgmental from our point of view because you know a lot of people don't know that life. Sure. So I just love the respect for each character that you guys had, but at the same time telling the truth about them. Um, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Zach's mother is also an Episcopal priest, so there's oh, wow. a lot of there's a but but as somebody who I mean is certainly not. Um, a religious person yeah. that they may not agree on everything but there's a lot of love and respect between those two people as a parent child relationship and just as human beings so that certainly comes in but I think you have to love your characters they should all be sure if you don't then maybe you shouldn't have them <laughs> you know I, they should well yeah I mean for me it's always like you're gonna spend the next at least two years of your life with these people you <laughs> that you're well creating like yeah. right yeah you know? so true it's like, I guess it's kind of like being a lawyer, too. Like, that's your client. you got to kind of, like, be on their side, right? Yeah. Sure. I don't know what it's like to be a lawyer, but I guess you might be right. <laughs> Even if they're guilty, they're still your client, right? Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, you have to understand where people are coming from. Yeah, they, they yeah. don't make the best decisions. And they, people are flawed. But they are usually coming from a place where they are trying to do the right thing. I think that's certainly mm -hmm. all of the, all sure. of our yeah. characters are desperately trying to make the right decision and do what they think is right. And um, they may not always be succeeding at that, but you have to come from that place for sure. And talk about the talent, because you you come from it from an actor point of view as well. So what is, and even though you do have, I don't know, spoiler alert, a little part <laughs> in the film, <laughs> um, what is it like looking at it from <clears throat> the other side? Oh my God, I mean, it's so eye-opening and amazing. I was trained as an actor and I always wanted to be an actor since I was a little kid. And um, the second I started working with Zach, uh, I found myself getting more and more involved on the other side of things. And um, it's empowering and amazing. It's really wonderful to see the whole thing come together in, in that way. And I love and respect actors and I think creating opportunities for people to give amazing performances like Keith Polson gave in this film and, and of course Addison Timlin who plays Colleen but but like the opportunities as an actor that Keith has because he's working through being disfigured and all of that I mean you know those are really special things that I feel like especially somebody who's an actor and has that background like I, I don't know maybe I'm really attracted to those kinds of stories and those kinds of roles and I get really excited about those kinds of performances. But I, I mean, Ali Sheedy gives an unbelievable performance. There are times when she was on set where I would just get chills or tear up watching this incredible process and she is the most prepared. I mean, always ready to go, right? I mean, just never, never a line she didn't know 10 times over, backward and forward, and have so many amazing choices she came to the table with. So I, I, I work on the other side, it's like I'm 
learning. It's like I'm in acting school still, learning from all these incredible actors. I just got to work with Deborah Winger for five minutes, but she was on set with, with us for a very short period of time. But even that, it's like just getting to see these actors, these incredible actors that I've grown up admiring do work on set from the other side is, it, it's almost better than doing it myself, I think. Maybe it is better than doing it myself compared if you look at what I'm doing now. I obviously think that. Um, but, I mean, you don't have an acting background, but... I'm terrible acting. <laughs> <laughs> you need to put yourself in, in your films, just little cameos. He, he has two weird little cameos. Yeah, I like movies. to cover my face. He wears masks in both of them. Or, well, or do you wear, one he's wearing a mask, the other one you just don't see his face. Yeah. Cut, it's just not visible. But they're fun, strange ones. I'm not going to tell you what. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad at acting. <laughs> what is it like for you as a director to see like such talent? Is it intimidating for you, or are you... no? It makes my job easy. You know, it really does um, to work with people who are so good at what they do. Um, you're really just sort of suggesting directions it could go or giving them things to try. Um, it's a real, it's a real joy. And it makes the thing this whole other thing. So that's the secret of being a great director is just hire good people. And yeah, across the yeah. board. That's the secret to the everything, board. right? There's no way you can't, you know. Surround you're yourself with ever. amazing people. That's the answer to everything. You can never do it all, you know? And yeah, I mean, if you just, if you hire people who are good at their jobs, then they make you better. Yeah, oh yeah. And actors especially, I mean, actors who, lo who A, love the script, and B, come from a place where they just, like, they are, they have all this ability. I mean, what... What a wonderful thing! The make the, the the process of making this film was such a pleasure because there was not one there was not one actor that wasn't bringing something really truly special to the table. I mean, and, and, and every single one person we worked with had some truly special moment that you just went, oh wow, I'm so grateful for that. If not a million of them. So. Well, what's next for you guys? Where are you going next with the film? Uh, it's having its international premiere at the Edinburgh Film Festival this coming weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes, that's what's next for it. Awesome. Yeah, very uh, exciting. And what about you? What are you doing, like, acting-wise, acting producing-wise? There's a lot of upcoming stuff. There's a lot of really exciting stuff. I have a film I'm um, producing uh, called Riot Girl is Dead that I'm hoping to shoot here in Dallas, um, which is going to be probably in January. I'm really excited about that uh, with producer Ash Christian, who is one of the executive producers on this and helped us get um, Ali Sheedy on board. So uh, that's something I'm looking forward to and really excited about. And there are lots of other things that are sort of in the works here and there. Um, we have a, a new script that's being, uh, that's not quite being finished written. Um, Zach is co-writing with a great, very talented friend of ours, Drew Tobia, who made a film called See You Next Tuesday. I have a small cameo in that he's a brilliant writer. And these two are truly going back and forth and writing this thing in a way that is like, I can't tell you, every time I get a new, few new pages to read, I get so excited. Mm -hmm. It's really special. I don't want to say it too much about what it's about, but, um, but it's in the works, and we're going to have something really exciting for people to see, hopefully within the next year and a half or two years. Well, can't it wait. takes a while. Congratulations, <laughs> you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.